All right, welcome to Night Hacking at the Dev Nexus Conference. We're doing the final drive-by interview of the day with Joab Lundman. Hey. Welcome. And we're going to be chatting a little bit about Bintray and Docker and Chef and Vagrant and all the cool stuff which yeah, you've been. all the good stuff. All the good stuff you're playing around with. So what are you, what are you doing here at the conference today? So uh, today we just have the booth. Uh, okay, tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. So tomorrow, uh, tomorrow I have uh, I give two talks. Uh, first one is uh, the Groovy Puzzlers together with Bao. The second time we do it. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that guy's appeared on the Night Hacking stream before in some other countries. Yeah, exactly. Never in the U.S. though. Uh, it was in Java One, not not in Night Hacking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the one we did together in uh, Java One. So that's a really fun talk. And uh, another talk, which is not less fun, is uh, a talk about. Uh, our experience with uh, uh, setting up a development environment for Bintray. Uh, so I'm going to speak about our experience moving from uh, a development environment that was based, based uh, mainly on Vagrant uh, and Chef, moving to uh, a combination of uh, Vagrant, Docker, and a little bit of Chef. But uh, we switched the focus from Chef to Docker uh, at least in the development environment. And I'm going to talk about our experience uh, doing that because there are many ways to do that. Uh, and we kind of went through four different phases of changing mm. our environment to go from, um, uh, f from Chef with Vagrant to Vagrant with uh, Docker. OK, so you guys not only build infrastructure, you also test infrastructure patterns in your own uh, development. Kind of. The, the, the goal is to make developers move uh, as fast as possible. So the DevOps, uh, they always try to uh, uh, outsmart what they did before and find more creative ways. So their goal basically is that uh, developers won't harass them too much. So yeah. if developers come back with too many questions, it's, it's their trigger to look for another solution. So I'm going to go for the path that we, uh, uh, that we went for, you know, finding the best solution that we are currently employing today. OK, and are you completely happy now on try number four? Uh, with the final solution, you mean? Yeah, yeah. We're probably going to tweak it more. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it took us a while together. So for now, we're staying with that. And uh, it, it's not problem free, but still, it's, uh, it's the best we came up with until now. So, yeah. OK, all right. So for for folks who don't know much about this, let's, let's go through them first. So what is Vagrant? So Vagrant, basically, it's, uh, you can think about it as a command line to run VMs. So it's, uh, it's a tool that, uh, uh, that you configure to fire up different VMs. VMs can have different providers. So a provider can be, uh, for example, the out-of-the-box virtual box. It can be a, a VMware machine, an AWS uh, cloud instance, uh, or it can be Vagrant. Uh, uh, sorry, or it can be uh, Docker. OK, all right, so I was going to ask next, how does it compare to Docker? Uh, it's a complementary thing to Docker. So uh, as part of, your, part of your VM can be running uh, a Docker machine, basically a Docker container on a provided host. So uh, basically, part of what Vagrant is doing, it's once you fire a host, once you fire a VM, yeah. it, uh, it's capable of configuring the VM and provisioning it with uh, different types of pluggable providers. So one of those providers can be a, a chef. Uh, OK, good. We got to number three. <laughs> and what, <laughs> What's chef? OK, chef is uh, basically a provisioning framework. Uh, it's an automated configuration framework that is capable of uh, uh, having pluggable recipes uh, yep. uh, that are running through your uh, machines or infrastructure and, uh, and r basically performing. So is there a, is there a Docker on Vagrant recipe? Again? Is there, a, is there a chef recipe for Docker on Vagrant? Uh, you're getting it too meta for me. <laughs> Uh, but the, the thing is, it can be very, uh, it can get pretty complicated with uh, vagrant concepts such as you, you have a chef, you have a, a Docker provisioner, yeah. and you have a Docker provider, and they have a lot of overlap between them. So uh, to find the right combination and the right, uh, uh, um, and the right way to do things with uh, vagrant and, and Docker 
is not, it, it wasn't that. Okay, simple. so but it sounds like you're moving away from Vagrant in your most recent iteration. No, not at all. No? We're, no, we're moving, uh, we're, you, you can say we're moving away from Chef because we use Chef heavily uh, in production. Okay. But for the development environment to speed things up because our development environment uh, is, uh, B Binter is a collection of microservices and a lot of those services that are, uh, some of them they are cloud services, some of them in development they are totally different than what's in staging and production. Yeah. So to speed up the development environment setup, we uh, kind of moved away from Chef because the Chef provisioning is, is a long process. It, uh, takes so a it's good for production because it's repeatable and it's scripted and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. 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 But for development, it's too heavyweight. It's it's yeah, it's kind of too heavyweight, and we were looking to uh, to use the, the the one big advantage that Docker has. It 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 allows you to kind of enjoy both worlds. You can have a, a, like a pre-made image, so it boots up in a couple of seconds, mm -hmm. and uh, you can also have it updated by uh, doing a, a Docker pull and get a new version of your image, which is uh, incremental. So cool. that's uh, because Docker images, the, the, the a Docker uh, uh, container is made up of an image which is loud. So that gives you. The so you actually have the thing. ability to do reasonable version control on images rather than having just to be a big yeah. blob. Yeah. Do version control, but on the other hand, have uh, a starting point which is uh, very convenient to, to bootstrap your environment from. So from time to time, we would take our uh, bootstrapping starting point. Mm -hmm. And we would uh, take all those uh, images that we did on top of them, all the additions and con configuration changes, and make a complete new box, a vagrant box with the Docker images built in. So that's a uh, kind of jump to the end solution, but that's what we're doing uh, at the end. But it's an interesting okay. development. Okay. And would you say this works pretty well from both a development and operational perspective, how you guys have it worked out? It works out? very well. Uh, yeah. I can tell you that our DevOps are happy <laughs> because uh, <laughs> they have more time to do uh, other stuff than answering developers' questions. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. That sounds pretty successful. Okay. And then the last one, you chat a little bit about Bintray. Yeah. But what is Bintray? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch to your screen here and, okay. and let you leverage that. So yeah, so this is the, the Bintray screen on my machine. So Bintray basically, it's a, it's a distribution platform. You can think about it as an infrastructure for a, a download center or an infrastructure for a distribution uh, service. So anyone that wants to uh, distribute software can use Bintray. Uh, we give it free for open source projects. So that's, uh, you can see here, let me just reload the, the screen here. So you can see that there is already a new version that was published by, uh, so it's an Android application that was uh, published not so long ago, 15 minutes ago. Basically, we have uh, huge projects today on Bintray. So we have uh, uh, projects like uh, the Apache Software Foundation is oh, distributing wow. on Bintray. So Cassandra today is distributed. All the Debian repository of Cassandra is nice. on Bintray. Uh, we were talking about Vagrant, so uh, So Vagrant itself is today distributed from Bintray. Uh, and as, as the project owner, so obviously Mitchell here, he gets more information that we can see. But uh, even if we go to the statistics, you can see the different split between versions. So it's interesting. You can see, for example, that uh, the 1.6.5 and 1.7.2 are the, the most widely used. And uh, 1.7.1, for example, nobody almost <laughs> so you can see yeah, the so people, patterns. From, people jump uh, straight. Yeah, exactly. People like to at least wait for two incremental versions before they upgrade to something. That's good to know. Uh, we have projects like uh, Garrett, uh, as we are both using Max or Homebrew. So Homebrew just recently switched to Bintray. Uh, and all the Homebrew battles are now when you install any Homebrew uh, uh, software today, it's coming from Bintray. Cool. So it's uh, one of the big users on Bintray. Uh, Grails, for example, is also on Bintray. Yeah, so I'm, Grails, I'm homebrewing on my machine. Yeah. So if we go to Grails, 
we can see that they started uh, moving all the Grails 3 plugins nice. to Bintre. Yeah, I should get in early on that one. I could be one of the first watchers of the project. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another thing uh, which reminded me, if we go to, uh, oops, not the tag, if you go to the Grails org, so one thing we added, so in Bintre, especially in the open source, we're trying to, uh, to build tr trust between uh, software vendors and software uh, consumers. Yeah. So if, for example, if I take Graham, the uh, Grails project lead, and I go to his uh, personal profile. So he's like a, like a real person. Yeah, he did. He is real. Person. Actually, I've, I've met him. <laughs> <laughs> Me too at some point. Uh, so you can see that you can download his public key. But wh what's more is that you can see his Twitter handle and uh, GitHub handle. Yeah. If, if I go over this icon, this is new from, the, I think, a day or two. So this means that he, uh, he verified those accounts. So uh, his, key, his key is not only verified on uh, some public key server. Uh, you can actually use the, the, um, you know, the, the media, the, the, the social media, or the, the, uh, his credibility on other uh, popular, uh, f popular sites or popular. Uh, oh, okay, so like the reputation here is actually like based on your verified um, external. Yeah, social so, media sites. So this means he did an OAuth authentication with GitHub and with, even with Twitter, and that nice. it's actually him. Okay. So that's uh, something. So that's good. That so he's actually the guy I met, not some imposter. <laughs> he's not who's, an imposter. Who's trying to sure, get yeah. access to my code and mess it up? <laughs> Very nice. Another chance. All right. No, that's really exciting. So I'm looking forward to your talk tomorrow. Great. That's going to be really good. And um, yeah, no. So how, enjoy Atlanta. And um, where will I see you next in the world? What, else, what other conferences are you, are you so lined up for the, this year? The JFOG user conference, the first JFOG user conference in May. Oh, in the, the Napa Swamp Valley. Up. The Swamp Up, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward and, to uh, that. Yeah, I guess I'll see you there. Okay, so yeah. Great. Napa, wine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a deal. All right, thanks, y'all.